All right, hello and back. Another Pioneer video deck profile. Uh, I'm going to try something different this time. I'm just going to show... I'm going to make the video as short as I can. So, just going to show a quick match um, that hopefully highlights what the deck can do. But today we have a Golgari Igra combo deck. Uh, I'm sure if you've been paying attention to Pioneer, you've seen a lot of Igra going around. Typically, it's just being stuck into the red-black decks uh, with Fable and all that stuff. Which is probably the best way to do things until... Fable gets banned, which I'm sure that day will come. Just, you'll have to wait. Uh, but for now, we're trying something a little different. I don't have any Mayhem Devils, which, yeah, I'm playing a sack deck in a Mayhem Devil format is very stupid, I know. But what can you do? I like trying different stuff. Um, and I don't have any uh, Witches Ovens either, which uh, is part of why I built this deck this way, is the, the Mayhem Devil Witches Oven decks... Uh, end up getting a lot of incidental damage that kind of function like a burn deck in some ways where you can just ping people down uh, without doing too much and I thought it was kind of strange to like have this combo kill in your deck that's just burning people out right like I don't want to lava spike someone three times and then splinter twin them um, I think that it's fine to have like I, I think those Rakdos decks end up just being probably the best way to build it just because their cards are busted like regardless of how that plan plays out um, but th this is how I came to this style of deck. It's really weird to look at a deck with four cauldron familiar and no, uh, no witches oven, but I wanted to try to build a combo deck instead of a like food deck that just has this random combo kill. So I have, uh, the first thing that came to mind was, was fauna shaman because fauna shaman can discard cauldron familiar, get another cauldron familiar, and then you can discard that one, get an egra. And then if you get the egra into play, you can just win the game as long as you have another creature. Um, Fauna Shaman, uh, one of the cards that came to mind after I decided I wanted to build around with Fauna Shaman was Tyvar, which, um, obviously can get back Fauna Shaman, it can untap Fauna Shaman so you get multiple activations, and it also gives Fauna Shaman's activated ability haste, um, so th the rest of the deck ended up mostly built around Tyvar because of all these things that I wanted to do, so we have the, like, Elf Priest, um, Low Strider, Catacomb Sifter, some old Rutsteins. All these cards make bodies for Priest. Um, and Priest plays extremely well with Tyvar. So that's sort of the Tyvar engine of the deck. Um, and then spliced into that is the Cauldron Familiar Fauna Shaman. Egra stuff. And then I have I have a few one-ofs for Fauna Shaman. Um, a Mosswood Dread Knight, just as a value get. Like, this card's fine to draw. Um, and if, if you don't know exactly what you want, maybe you're not close to the combo, it's just a card you can get in a grindy matchup. Um, a Tingle Floor Hedron, which is just a land. Um, sometimes you play games where you get your elves sweeped away or they get killed, um, and you just want to use Fauna Shaman to tutor up a land so you don't have to worry about it dying. Um, so you can just eventually cast your Egra. Also, it's just a fine card. It's just a mana guy and a land. Um, and then there's a Dreadwander. Which also plays well with uh, Fauna Shaman. Uh, and some of the grindy matchups, like if someone's go blanking you or thought seizing you or croxing you, stuff like that, it's nice to be able to just keep using Fauna Shaman for value. Um, th there are also spots where you want to like get a like you have four mana um, and you want to be able to get an elf uh, and play it, but then you don't have a creature in your hand, so Dreadwander can help you. Get creatures, play them, and then still have something to discard later for Fauna Shaman when you want to set up the Egra kill. So, um, yeah, that, that's it for the main deck. I don't have too much more to say about it. Some fountain ports, just to give extra bodies for Priest. Uh, you can sack off extra tokens from, like, Old Rutstein or Catacomb Sifter. Uh, Avraska, just as, it's a solid value card. You get to play it because you're not a collected company deck, so you can kind of just play whatever things you want um this can answer just things like rest in peace it can clear fable the beer breakers it can blow up mayhem devil which is obviously a problem for this deck so i think it's just a solid value card this one doesn't really need to be here but i think it's decent uh for the side deck we have giganta again another card that i just don't understand why it's still legal in pioneer but it is so everyone plays with it um and then just a load of obvious cards thoughts these fatal push go blank for phoenix Haywire Might as just like anti-graveyard hate stuff. Um, and th this can be useful in sort of Miri type things where if you want to blow up. 
it can clear Fable the Beyond Breaker before it loots, or it can deal with uh, ovens, the class, just random sagas, stuff like that, and some damping spheres for Lotus Field. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I wanted to make this video quick, so we're just going to do one match. And get out of here. Okay. So we're against Karuga. We show our companion, they show their companion. I think in this league, I played against five companions. I'm not 100%, or maybe it's four. I think I played against Phoenix, Giganta, 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 Karuga. And we played against a lot of Fabled Mirror Breakers. Who knew? Okay, it's two times speed. So my hand's solid. Elf into three. Um, unfortunately, I have called him familiar, so I can't play like another elf, but that's whatever. Get to be on the play, which is a really big deal, especially against a deck like Karuga. I'm sure this deck's win percentage on the draw just tanks because it doesn't get to play many cheap cards. Draw land, and I think I just played Cauldron Familiar. Vraska, sack the Cauldron Familiar. So yeah, pretty obvious play. So we have the board. Um, there's a second Cauldron Familiar, so all we need is Igra, and we can just win the game. There's Fable, but we already have Vraska down, so we can just clear that off. And I have Woe Strider to dig through my deck. I have this Fountain Port uh, and the Vraska to draw more cards. Uh, decide to minus the Tyvar, just get back a Cauldron Familiar. Hoping to spike a Priest. Priest or Fauna Shaman. Fa Fauna Shaman just wins the game. Priest lets me, you know, redraw, clear the Goblin. But just play out our hand and pass. Play another Fable. Yep, yep. And I decided to sack my board, try to dig for the kill. I, I know I'm really close to it, um, and these, like, Cauldron Familiars don't mean that much. I mean, neither does the, does the Goat. So now I think... So first thing I do is see what Tyvar hits, and now I need to figure out what I want to do, because I have plenty of options. I can just get rid of the Vraska. Um, I can Woe Strider first. So I decided to Woe Strider, sack the Moss with Dread Knight, there's a Rudstein. I'm just looking for Fauna Shaman or Eager here. And there's Fauna Shaman, but I do not have... Um, I don't have a creature. So I can get Gigantha, but I have only four mana. And I need six, I believe. So I think I'm going to clear Fable and then play out my hand. And then next turn, not under pressure. Like, I don't think my opponent's going to combo kill me somehow. So, I think I just play out the hand, and then next turn, they, if they don't kill the Fauna Shaman, we can use Giganta, get Igra, and then they're probably just going to die from there. So, what happens here? I block Goblins. I'm also Dread Knight. Goes in the graveyard. They sack a bunch of treasures. And there's Temporary Lockdown, which is pretty annoying, so... I lost my board, but I still have the Moss with Dread Knight in my graveyard. I have a Tyvar in play. I've got the Fountain Port. I have a Gigantha. Uh, they play Heliod, get back a Fable, sure. And then we draw a really, really good card here, which is Priest with Tyvar in play. So now I have the Moss with Dread Knight on an adventure. We drew an Elf. We have Tyvar for an untap if that matters. I don't think it matters too much. But here's Priest. So Priest plus Moss with Dread Knight is also just awesome. You get to sack it and then immediately play it. Um, I draw Fauna Shaman, but I know that I don't have double green, so I'm not going to be able to use it. And I don't have a creature anyway. So, But again, I'm pretty happy with my spot. Um, I know I can Fauna Shaman for Ygra, and if I have a creature, then I will be able to just win the game. So Kenrith, Haste, Attack. Sure, just keep doing the grindy stuff. Um, Priest can clear Hen or Kenrick. And I guess I just draw an eager naturally. So now I have Creature to sack. I have two Cauldron Familiars in my graveyard. Um, so I know that I know, I know they have a Fable. So the way that I don't uh, kill them is they put a Creature into play and then have an answer for Igra. Um... But they main phase Leyland Binding. They don't want me to find the Eager, I guess. And I already have it. So we play it. And now we can start looping our Cauldron Familiars and opponent scoops. So for sideboard, put in Thoughtseize, Haywire hey, Might. Um, I don't remember what I take it out. I 
I want to say I just okay. So this this band deck's a little different than the one in the video, but I do think the changes I made were important. So I, th I thought about just uh, the the only difference I think is just like plus a dread knight and another card, and then uh, it's just the tangled floor floorhedron, and then the um, the black one drop that you can get back from your hand. So for the most part, it's the same deck uh, trying to accomplish the same thing. All right, so I have five, five one-mana cards and a one-lander on the draw. I decided to keep um, with the intention of play Elf, Thoughtseize, maybe clear temporary lockdown, play another Elf. Um, so, yep, I just fire, fire off the Thoughtseize and see their hand, which is a Leyland Binding that they use. And a Fable and a bunch of lands. So, whatever. Play my Phonic Shaman. Pass. They have nothing. Um, so, this is this is a game is, I, I think, a pretty good example of why I want the Tangled Floorhedron. Where it's something I could just get here and I don't have to worry about a temporary lockdown. With, with the way my deck is configured, I can discard any of these cards to get an elf, and that gives me a mana source, but I don't have a land that's a mana source. So the Tangle Florahedron here would have let me discard one of my cards, play a land, and then play the elf as well. Um, and that gets me to four mana, which is way closer to Ygra. So hope that makes sense. So yeah, I, again, kind of an awkward spot. I don't have a way to get more mana sources. So the Fauna Shaman doesn't really do anything. Um, it, it's nice for me to discard the Cauldron Familiar, because then it's just in the graveyard. But if I get my mana sources swept, it doesn't matter, because I'm not going to be able to cast Ygra. Uh, I sandbag the Thoughtseize, because I, I know eventually they're probably going to add Karuga. And I'm hoping that... Uh... Sorry about that. I'm, I'm hoping that I can snipe it that way. But they have Fire, Fires of Invention and Harvester of Misery. This is a 5-4 that gives all the creatures minus 2, minus 2, and yeah. Like I said, no Tangled Floorhedron makes things rather awkward. I could have a third land, and maybe I regrow my board, and maybe I stabilize. Um, but I think them having Karuga plus Fires just means, you know, GG. Classic companion being disgusting <laughs> in my favorite format, Bionair. So there's Karuga, there's Temporary Lockdown, attack me for four. I think I, I play some stuff out, finally find a land, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't amount to much. They show an enemy incarnation, get Elish Norn. I, I can't do anything against Elish Norn. Um, so... All right, so I have all my Priests out and two Elves out against the deck that I assume is going to have four Temporary Lockdowns. Um... And yeah, I all I all I really want to do is get mana, activate Vaughn Shaman, and then combo them. So this hand has mana, um, doesn't exactly have Fauna Shaman or the combo stuff yet, but it does have some redraws, some mills, all that stuff matters. This hand's great. I definitely am not mulliganing this. So Elf and a Tyvar, tag you for one again. This is what happened in game one. They play some lands. And then we thought to see what they have. I, I don't know if I play this game great. But they have two Leyland Bindings. So I just want to take the Enigmatic Incarnation so they can't attract me. I'll just let them Leyland Binding me. Whatever. I, I know I have some Haywire Mites in my deck. Um, and they are a little bit awkward for them. Um, they're going to still cost two mana. So... Minus the Tyvar, since I'm worried it's going to get binding anyway. Um, find a Cauldron Familiar, sure. So they play land, pass. I found a Shaman. I think I get the wrong thing here. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do, right? If, if I get the Cauldron Familiar, then they're just going to... Um, Leyline Binding the Fauna Shaman. I end up just drawing Cauldron Familiar, so I think it doesn't matter. But I'm not sure what I was supposed to get. Like, if I just get Cauldron Familiar and then they Leyline Binding the Fauna Shaman, I kind of have nothing going on. If I get Ygra, I at least have this big creature in play um, to beat them down. And I know they can't really answer it well because they have this Annie 
joins up. That's what I think it deals five damage. They're not gonna have a creature in play. Um, so yeah. So they end up having to literally I'm binding the cauldron familiar, so I can't combo them. That's fine. Your turn. Uh, another hand mostly sucks. It's just uh, Annie joins up Scarab God and some unknowns. And I have a creature and a Fauna Shaman. I have a Cauldron Familiar in the graveyard. So I'm really close to being able to kill them. Uh, they lay land binding to go after the Fauna Shaman. They can't kill the Igra. And then we just sack it to get the Cauldron Familiar back. And then I mill with Tyvar. Tyvar gets back Fauna Shaman. Fauna Shaman discards Igra. I get a Haywire Might. This doesn't really matter. I could have just gotten uh, could have just gotten a Cauldron Familiar. Um, and then I sack the first Cauldron Familiar to the fact that it's a food. And then we get Loop. And that's game. So that's a match with the deck. Um, you can see how it works. It, it, like, I might have already said this, but it, it's interestingly kind of similar to Amalia. I, I guess both of those were Fauna Shaman decks, but... You just put a lot of pressure by threatening this combo kill. Um, and in the meantime, you can just you just play like a regular game with mana guys and creatures, beat down, you have this like sack value engine, you're resilient against removal and some exile effects. Priests can prey on other creature decks. So this deck's sweet. I, I think it it's it's pretty awkward to have play a sacrifice deck against Mayhem Devil. One of the, the problems I've always had with Pioneer, even going back like four or five years, however, however old the format is. Um, like I've played things like Rally the Ancestors and just like green black sack decks and black white sack decks. All the, all these decks, um, eventually you just run into an opponent that's playing Mayhem Devil and you just feel like an absolute idiot for showing up with a deck that doesn't have Mayhem Devil. Uh, that card is just so horrendously designed. But I, I don't think you, that you should play this deck in the current metagame. Um, unless you just want to like do your thing and have some fun at FNM, but it, it's really awkward playing this against Mayhem Devil because if I have a priest and you have a Mayhem Devil, I sack two things and then you get to kill the priest. Even if you sack the devil, you can ping off like another elf. Uh, there's just a lot of problems with that. Uh, but de depending on what the metagame becomes and, uh, what happens with the format in the future, maybe there'll be some like weird angle that will open up where this will be appealing to have. And I do think there's an argument to be made that this is faster at comboing than the red-black deck, potentially. Um, like I said, I, I don't think Fable will always be around in Pioneer 2. So, if you do like this style of deck, um, and that card becomes something that is not available, you can maybe switch over to this. Um, makes it a little harder to justify playing with Mayhem Devil when you don't want to play red in your deck because you don't have Fable. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile and the match. Um, I wanted to make this video a little bit shorter, so I just did one match. I don't know what people prefer. Um, but for me personally, I kind of, I, I don't, most of the time I want to watch like a 10 minute video top, tops and I'll, I'll lose interest. So I wanted to try doing things this way. So let me know if you guys like it. Um, and yeah, expect, expect some more Pioneer. I, it's been rough to be frank. Like this format is, um, it's fun to build decks in and not really fun to play in my opinion like a lot of the games are pretty awful um but there is some cool stuff you can do and obviously the card pool is really big so hopefully hopefully you know things get better with time but i i'm not holding my breath i, I think that the people in charge of curating the pioneer format are uh scared of you know pissing the players that have bought decks and collections off. So I think that's part of why you see less change in the format than maybe people would like to see. But who knows? Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Peace.